Hey, Buff Nation, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson here. Football 2022 for the Buffaloes. We're talking with uh, the associate head coach now and the receivers coach, Bill McKagan, here for a couple minutes. All right, a little over a week in. What do you think about your fellas so far? I'm excited, Mark. You know, I think the first week, obviously, we're trying to get clarity around the fundamentals and details and then play fast with finish. Uh, so it's kind of all over the place a little bit in the first few practices. Um, but I thought the last two practices, I saw more fundamentals. I saw more details with our splits and our assignments. So I'm encouraged, over, especially over the last two days, about the response to the challenges that, that we've made to them as an offensive staff. You know, we're living in a new world of college athletics where you know, there's transfer portal and guys leave and guys come in. So it's, it's real tough for maybe fans to get a sense of, of who this group is at this point in time. Sure. There's still some guys out there that uh, everybody knows, Daniel Arias and those types of guys. But maybe tell them about this whole group and what makes you excited about them. Well, the, the selflessness of the whole group and the collectiveness. So they had, they had an off day. We had meetings, but they had an off, you know, Chase Penner had all those guys over for dinner last night, you know, all 14 of the wideouts, you know, talking about where they're from and what they're playing for and, and just having some, some uh, deep discussions about who they are as people. So I feel like... These guys, and like you mentioned, in a world where it's instant gratification and they have the, the freedom to leave at any moment, essentially, um, and uh, there's just a lot of variables that we cannot control as coaches. So I think that we just need to do a great job of staying present with the details that we can control, with the messaging with our players in our room, what is important, the fundamentals, the detail, the togetherness, the finish, the physicality of football, the togetherness of a unit when you're off the field, you know, what's required of you in the morning before the meetings to review the script and signals, what's required of you after our walkthrough to go up there and make sure you have clarity around the, the next day's script. So all of those things I'm really excited about when it comes to the receivers because we tell them what to do and then they have enthusiasm and they go and tack the task. You talk about that enthusiasm. That's one thing that I've, I've really seen. There's great energy around this team, isn't there? Sure. Absolutely. And I feel Coach Durrell does a great job of talking about, you know, a person who's willing versus eager because they're both going to do it. But we have eager learners in the receiver room. All right. And, and that's the ability to live, not just to exist. You know, so we're out here. We are trying to live in every play. We're trying to make a run play explode into the secondary and get a touchdown based on our touchdown block on the second level. You know, we're trying to finish in the end zone. We're trying to finish a block in a dominant position. So I just think it's an attitude about how we're going to package and present this product to the CU fans because they deserve, they deserve better. Let's be honest about that. You know, you, you think about where this offense was a year ago. You know, there's a lot of room to improve on what we saw a year ago. When you look at this overall unit, what are you optimistic about in terms of offense? I'm optimistic about our collective focus and our collective production. I, I, I think we're going to surprise a lot of people this year top to bottom if we can stay healthy. You know, there's a lot of that happens yesterday on the Lord's Day when you say your prayers and, and, and all and uncover the team with, uh, with prayers so that, that there's no injuries. But, you know, God willing, if we stay healthy, I think we're going to shock a lot of people with what based on what I've seen through the first six or seven practices. I was standing out here practice today, and uh, Buff's great Daniel Graham was out there. He came running by and said hi. Well, what's the value of having a guy like that that's a Mackey Award winner, one of the greats of all time, played for 11 years in the NFL? What's the value of having those guys around this program? It's, it's an invaluable. It's invaluable. I remember you know, when I was a, a member of the Broncos, I remember watching Daniel play here in 2001 when I was a rookie, and I remember coming to games and standing on the sideline when I had an opportunity to uh, in off seasons, you know, and, and, and different things as far as when I was retired. Um, you know, I just know how important this program is to the state, and I understand how important a Jeremy Bloom is to the receiver and Nelson Spruce. I understand you know, Mr. Logan and all these people that were great players, you know, Joel Klatt. You know, like those. You know, those people are important. You know, to our to our program. Bobby Purify, those backs they had at back then. The, like we owe the fans more. We owe the alumni more, and that was part of the decision making process. You know, when Coach offered the position here, and we had other opportunities. That was really one of the biggest driving factors. Is th this state, this program, these fans, and these players? They deserve better, and that motivates myself and the rest of the coaches on this staff to to be better. Well, and I tell you what, the fans are cheering as they hear you say that, by the way, because they all agree with you. L lastly here, you come on board as a receivers coach, then uh, Carl Durrell uh, elevates you to the associate head coach. What, what does that mean to you? It means a lot because it's coming from Carl, and I, I know, know Carl really well. He's a mentor of mine. Uh, he has been for 20 years. So 
I understand what he wants done in this program. So to be a direct extension of his vision, values, ethics, morals, and, and all the things that it takes to run a, a program, that means a lot because, it, because I have a great deal of respect for Coach Durrell, as everybody knows. Um, I also look at it as a role, if there's anything I can take off of Coach Durrell's plate to have him help him have a more efficient day, then it's my responsibility to help him do so. Um, you know, if there's everything doesn't have to be a problem for the head coach. So if there's little fires that are starting to happen and I know the answer that that's not what he wants, then I will just, you know, quietly correct that person in a positive m manner. All 110 guys that are here right now, um, that's the blessing of this is I get a chance to meet more people, impact more young people, and then help take some of the heavy lifting off coach, whether it's talking to donors or, or, or meeting with players or meeting with administration or talking to the different departments about what the expectations and saying, hey, that was excellent today, or hey, we could have done a little bit better if we anticipated these few, three or four issues that come up. We'll have a more uh, effective and efficient practice. Then, then whatever that, that means um, for coach and whatever he asks him to do, I'm eager to do those tasks. Well, that probably means more interviews with me as well. But uh, I'll say this. You got me excited. I can't wait for the season. That's Good luck. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time, Mark. All right. Associate Head Coach and Receivers Coach Phil McKagan as we look ahead to 2022 with the Buffaloes. Uh -huh.